Dear colleagues, my name is Reijo Linnola. Let me introduce Dr. Liliala Werner's video, A Little Physics on Intraocular Lens Opacification. This video was part of the video competition in ESCR's 2016 Congress held in Copenhagen. The very first material for intraocular eyeballs was PMMA. The eyeballs made of PMMA are hard lenses and they are not foldable. After Dr. Charles Gelman gave us phaco emulsification, the need for foldable eyeballs became evident. First generation of foldable eyeballs were made of silicone. They were difficult to fold, they opened violently inside the eye and they caused a lot of PCO. The next generation of foldable lenses were made of acrylate. There are hydrophobic acrylate and hydrophilic acrylate eyeballs in our use today. The difference is in the relation of the material with water caused by the chemical structure of the material and therefore its surface properties. Hydrophilic acrylate does contain only traces of water in material and we get them dry when we do open the package. Hydrophilic acrylate IOL have some proportion of water in the material and they are delivered to us in water containing packages. Then, some years ago, we started to get alarming reports of eyeballs getting opacities inside the eyes after the implantation. The unfortunate eyeball was Hydroview from Pausent Lom and other hydrophilic eyeballs then followed. This was alarming because these eyeballs were implanted in thousands all over the world. Do we need to explain all of them? What is the reason behind this phenomenon? Dr. Liliana Werner was in front line to study and then find the reason why these eyeballs did change. She had the laboratory and the means to study these explanted eyeballs with her colleagues. This video shows the results of light microscopy analysis, scanning electron microscopy, spectrophotometry for light scattering and light transmittance, shine flow imaging for backscattering of light. What was the reason behind these intraocular lens opacifications? Well, I'm not going to tell you that. Just go forward and see the video for yourself. Thank you. Our whole universe was in a hot, dense state that nearly 14 billion years ago expansion started. Wait, the Earth began to cool, the autotrophs began to drool. Calcification of hydrophilic acrylic intraocular lenses as well as snowflake degeneration of PMMA lenses are important causes of IOL opacification, requiring explantation. As shown in this example, the symptoms experienced by the patients may be predominantly glare and cloudy vision, while visual acuity is not drastically reduced. How can we better understand the effects of IOL opacification on the visual function? Okay, so here's the thing. I was wondering if you could maybe teach me a little physics. A little physics? <laughs> Calcification of hydrophilic acrylic lenses is a multifactorial problem, and IOL manufacture, packaging, surgical techniques, adjuvants, as well as patient metabolic conditions, among others, may be implicated. Calcified deposits may be observed on the surface or within the substance of the lens. This supplementary lens calcified after a DMEK procedure. Microscopic analysis shows granules on the lens surface and subsurface. The nature of the granules can be confirmed by surface analysis. The explanted lens is placed on a support and analyzed under environmental scanning electron microscopy, which does not require a previous coating. An area containing granules is selected and analyzed under energy dispersive X-ray spectroscopy, which shows the elemental composition of the granules, generally calcium and phosphate. Snowflake degeneration is a slow process of PMMA degradation caused by long-term ultraviolet light exposure, sparing the periphery of the optic covered by the iris. Microscopy of explanted three-piece lenses manufactured in the 80s and early 90s reveals intraoptic spherical lesions corresponding to cracks in the optic substance.
A spectral photometer is used to measure light transmittance. The IOL is fitted to a plastic insert with an aperture for the optic, and this is placed inside a cuvette filled with BSS. which is then placed inside of the device. Mean light transmittance may be decreased by up to 11% in opacified explanted lenses. Light scattering is the deflection of a ray from a straight path, for example, by irregularities or particles in the propagation medium. A Scheimflug device can measure backscatter of IOLs. A customized three-piece dark eye model with a PMMA cornea is used to hold the IOLs under immersion in the BSS. The BSS filled eye model with the IOL is then placed in front of the Scheimflug camera with the cornea facing the device. Light scattering of opacified explanted lenses measured with this technique is usually so high that artifacts such as bright halos are usually seen in the images. However, this technique measures backscatter, which is the dispersion of light reflected out of the eye that can be seen by an external observer. There are different types of light scatter. In the Rayleigh type, light is scattered by particulate matter much smaller than the wavelength of the incident light. Scatter from particles near or larger than the wavelength of light is called me scatter. This type tends to be dominated by forward scatter. Therefore, considering the size of the opacifying structures, it is important to investigate forward light scattering through opacified lenses, which would correspond to the light scattered towards the retina of the patient. Forward scatter can be measured with the recently described complete angle scattering instrument. It uses a laser source to illuminate BSS immersed IOLs within a wet cell at the center of rotation of a goniometer arm. A detector measures light scattered per unit solid angle from the IOL as a function of angle. The measurements provide a profile of the scatter distribution for regions outside of the directly transmitted beam. Through specific mathematical relationships, Scattering can then be converted to a more clinically relevant metric to determine the potential impact of optic opacification on visual performance, the stray light, which is expressed in logarithmic units. Vandenberg and Associates describe the impact of stray light in human vision with serious hindrance found above 1.47 logs. This corresponds to almost four times the amount of stray light in a 40-year-old eye. In some opacified explanted IOLs we analyzed, we observed an increase in stray light of almost eight-fold in comparison with the young eye. Modulation transfer function is the ability of an optical system to transfer an object's contrast to its image. MTF of the opacified explanted lenses can be obtained in the hydrated state using an optical bench and a model eye with different pupil sizes. The dial images through the opacified lenses can also be obtained using a letter chart object. MTF was drastically reduced in explanted lenses with calcification and snowflake degeneration in comparison to controls. The same fact was observed for Badal image contrast through opacified explanted lenses. In summary, the levels of stray light found with opacified explanted lenses would be expected to cause a serious negative impact on the visual function, even if visual acuity was not significantly reduced. Clinical assessment of forward scattering may help in decisions regarding IOL explantation. A little physics goes a long way in helping us to understand the effects of IOL opacification on the visual function. Their observed phase shift in the diffusing electrons inside the metal ring already conclusively demonstrated the electric analog of the Aronov-Bohm quantum interference effect. <laughs> That's it. That's
That's all I know. Big Bang.